Eating is the act of ingesting the environment. These words from philanthropist Naomisha Ishige also gives us the notion of eating the culture of the group of people, a tradition so to speak. Thus, the idea of Filipino food. However, problems arise in terms of the identity of the Filipino food. There is a problem in terms that basically most of what we eat is being manufactured. Also, the generation nowadays doesn't even have any idea of the particular food from the respective regions. Thus, the narrative is being lost. Therefore, the question the researcher came up with is, what is the story of the Filipino food and how can architecture help in its identification? Thus, the researcher came up with the thesis, Food Museum of Filipino Cuisines Advancing Distributed Museums Through Narrative Multisensory Architecture. The Philippines basically is an archipelagic country that depends on aquatic and agricultural resources for food. That becomes the foundation of the researcher in mapping out the different food in the country. As the researcher did some research, he arrived at a solution. It was the predilection of the Filipino people that was the basis of mostly all of the Filipino food that we eat, namely alat, asim, pait, tamis, and anghang. Now each of these predilection obviously has a number of food, and among this food has stories to tell. To give an example in particular is the toyo or dyeing in coastal parts of the country. This is what they do because these dried fishes are made in preparation for the coming period when fisher folks can't go out to sea to fish. This is a monthly occurrence so this practice became a tradition, a story so to speak. This is what the goal of the food museum is. For telling them the story, they get to learn and understand the Filipino food identity. Now there's more to it. While having these predilections, the Filipino people are also known for indigenizing the food that they eat. This is because they use ingredients somehow similar to the original one that is readily available in their backyards or gardens. Therefore, up until now, there are a variety of cuisines, nomenclature, hybrids, and combinations of different Filipino food. Now going to the potential site of the project, the researcher came up with three sites located in NCR. This is because National Capital Region is the most ideal location for the promotion of the Filipino food cultural identity. The three potential sites was in Paranaque, FTI in Taguig, and Pasay City. All of these sites are fit to be the museum site but based on the evaluations made in the Likert scale, FTI came out on top. Now based on the analysis made in the site, as well as different strategies to be accompanied in the project, the researcher finally came up with the philosophy and concept. The design philosophy of the project will be Museum experience is evanescent and ephemeral as museum architecture is eternal. The experience inside the museum is like tasting a very delicious food. It must be consumed well as it doesn't last very long. As museum's tour can only be experienced for a short period of time during the day, the experience must be enjoyed for the short period of its existence. As for its design concept, the concept of the Filipino Food Museum is based on the Filipino's culture of indigenization of making something their own. The concept sticks to the idea of the Filipino culture being as dynamic, ever-changing, and timeless. Its architecture should be paying homage to the natural resources, both land and water, being provided to the Filipino people is also reflected in the museum's design and architecture. After which, the site is being developed. Now as you can see, the museum is divided into three structures namely the museum building, administrative building, and commercial building. With the addition of other components that complements either one or more of the structures stated. As you can see, the form and placement of the structures and other components reflect the geographical form of the country, its archipelagic nature. Looking further, the flow of spaces are designed so that it caters to the multi-sensorial aspects of its users as the museum narrates the story behind each of these Filipino food. Let's take a look on how the flow of spaces will be. Starting from the starting point which will be the main lobby, located in the administrative building, this will be placed for buying tickets as well as orientation for the museum visitors. After going through security measures, they will enter the museum building itself, starting from the sensory-deprived hallway. 
this hallway contains minimal light and is submerged in the water so as to activate the visitor's senses of what they are going to anticipate inside the museum itself. Next stop will be the one of the galleries named Alat. The form of space is clearly identical on how salt is made, which is also a nod to the natural geophysical form of it. Next part is the Asim where museum visitors will be welcomed with the scent of citrus fruits coming from the plants inside. This will be also enhanced by the use of cross ventilation. The next one will be the Pait or Anghang Gallery. This area shows hotness and roughness that is accompanied in eating bitter and spicy food using the rough materials as shown in the rendered image. The presence also of a circular void allows sunlight to penetrate and enhance the hotness inside. After that, visitors will be greeted with the playful variations of colors that is a nod to the idea of the sweetness or tamis. In this area, visitors are allowed to fully embrace their creative and playful sides. Afterwards, they will see the Heritage Kitchen which is a gallery of ancestral Filipino cooking wares. Then, they will be have a taste of different regional food from the Panlasang Pinoy Boots. Adjacent to this space is the Green Hall which showcases different Filipino fruit-bearing plants. The culmination of the experience will be the Cusinang Pinoy Factory that allows visitors especially kids to appreciate Filipino food by being taught how to cook one. Going on to the other spaces will be the Museum Deli where visitors can take a rest after the experience or take a seat while grabbing one of their favorite Filipino cuisine. The Museum Deli is adjacent to the commercial spaces that houses restaurants, museum bookstore, and souvenir shop. For events and lectures, exposition halls and theater is available upstairs on the second floor of the museum building as well as library for those who want to dig in deep to the Filipino food culture. At the end of the museum visit is the parking adjacent to the commercial building where they will go to their own buses or vehicles as they go home. In conclusion, eating is a culture and this culture must be passed on to new generations through tangible ones like architecture. This is the Food Museum of Filipino Cuisines Advancing Distributed Museums Through Narrative Multisensory Architecture.